In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you because you pronounce blessing upon your people. And you have promised to solve every problem of our lives. I pray, Lord, you manifest yourself in a great measure in every life in Jesus' name. Glorify yourself. Magnify the name of Jesus. Do wonders in the lives of your people. And I pray, O oh Lord, that today will be an unforgettable day in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you as you sit down. We're talking about the glorious day of divine visitation. That means God visiting us. That means God living his throne in heaven and coming to where you stay, coming to where you are and bringing blessing upon your life. When somebody leaves his place and he comes to our house and then he sits down, he fellowships with us, he even tries to help us. There's one language we use for that. We say, he has come to visit me. And that's the same language you are using for God. It's left everything he says, you are important to him. Your life is important to him. Your need is essential to him. He wants to wipe your tears away. He wants to roll those mountains away. He says, maybe you think you are not important. But he says, you are important to him. And because of that, he comes to you. We call that a visit. It's from that word visit we have, visitation. And because he is God and he comes to visit you on earth. We say, it's not a human visitation. It's a divine visitation. And then when he does that, he brings something your way. Look at Luke chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 16. Luke chapter 7 verse 16. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God has visited his people. And that God has visited his people. What did they see? What happened to them? What did Jesus bring to them? That made them to say God has come. He has visited his people. Look at verse 17. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the country, all the region, all the territories round about. And then in verse 22, then Jesus answered said unto them, Go your way and tell John, John the Baptist, what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see. The lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised, and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. And it's because of those wonderful works, the signs and the wonders, the miracles, the healings, the blind seeing, the lame walking, the deaf hearing, mountains rolling away. Problems being solved. That the people said God has visited his people. And God has visited you today. I want to hear you. I say God has visited you today. And your life will never remain the same in Jesus name. Let's look at the word of God before we pray. 
divine provision with divine visitation. Divine provision with divine visitation. When God visits us, he provides for us. He does some things for us. But I need to talk to you a little bit before I read the rest of the passages to you. You are not just a one singular cellular being. You are threefold. You have body, you have soul, you have spirit. And your body is the most important to you perhaps. Because it's all the body you see. You have eyes, you have nose, you have ears, you have ear, you have everything external. And that appears to be the most important. But actually, you know, your spirit is the most important. And then your soul is the next important. And your body is the last. Your body is the least important. Because dust thou art, and to dust you will return. And because we are conscious of our body every time. It's like the need of my body. I'm sneezing and I want to get relief. My eyes are dim. I want to get relief. My hand is weak and hanging down. I want you to get up and be strong. My legs cannot run. I want to get up and walk and run. That's legitimate. That's right. And that is necessary. But you know, all that is the body. And actually, you know this hand here, it cannot move and do like this, except there is a spirit within that gives it control, gives it instruction, and says, go up, come down, point this way, point that way. The hand itself is nothing without your spirit and your soul. And so that's why he brings provision for your body, he brings for your soul, he brings for your spirit. And actually, if your spirit is weak, your body will be weak. Let me tell you, somebody is energetic and mighty and powerful, he's able to run. He can pick up this and pick up that and take up that very strong. All of a sudden, you call him. Have you heard? He said, what? So you have not heard? An accident happened. Then what? And they discovered that so and so in that accident, now he is in a terrible condition. And they give you the name of that person. And the person happens to be the most important to you on earth. All of a sudden, because of that information you heard, it affects your spirit. It affects your soul. And your hands are weak. You cannot carry a bucket of water anymore. Your legs cannot carry you. You collapse and then you sit down. You begin to breathe as if you are going to die. Nothing happens to your body. It is the effect of your soul and your spirit on the body. So, if only your body is well and your soul and your spirit are not well, something is going to happen. You'll be weak. You will be strong completely. Spirit, soul, and body, you will be strong. I said you will be strong. Because I'm going to talk about every part of you. Healing for your body. Something in your soul. Something in your spirit. 
and you will get a full blessing in Jesus' name. Divine provision with divine visitation. Number one, happiness through salvation. I'm talking about your soul now. For your soul to be saved. For your soul to be forgiven. For your soul to have connection with the almighty God. For there to be no wall of partition between you and heaven. And between your soul and God. And he forgives you. And there's no guilt. And there's no condemnation. And you are saved. The joy that comes. The happiness that comes. And it is like medicine. When you are excited in life. When you are happy in life. When the joy of the Lord becomes your strength. Number one. The happiness that comes through salvation. Number two. This number two is talking about your body now. It is healing for every sickness. Cancer will fly away from you. Ulcer will flee away from you. Paralysis will leave your body. Blindness will leave your body there. Deafness, what are you talking about? It's gone already. And the dumbness, everything will vanish away. Your body will be strong. Your back will not be bent like this. You'll stand up straight and walk straight. Something is coming your way. There is salvation for your soul. There is healing for your body. If you believe, say amen. amen. Now I told you, you have a soul. I told you, you have a body. And praise the Lord, there is salvation for your soul. Praise the Lord, there is healing for your body. Now, if I just release you like that and you go. I have not spoken about the most important part of yourself. Your body, your soul, which one remains now? I said which one remains? Your body, number one. Your soul, number two. Tell me, which one remains? Your spirit. Your spirit. Now, there is something the Bible says about your spirit. It says the time is coming. When you come to the end of your race here on earth. Then it says the body will go back to the dust from whence it came. And then it says your spirit will go back to God. Here, your body will live only for a short time. Over there, your spirit will live forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And if it is so, that your body only lives for a short time here, and your spirit is going back to God, and is going to live forever and ever and ever, there must be provision for that spirit. And Jesus has made provision for the spirit. That's why we come to talk about all the three parts. The body, the soul, and the spirit. There is healing for the body. There is salvation for your soul. There is sanctification for your spirit sanctification for your spirit point number one happiness through salvation happiness through salvation number two healing for the sick number three heaven for the sanctified heaven for the sanctified number one tell me number one number one Happiness through salvation. 
you know, when you are sorrowful, it kind of depreciates everything in your life. If you carry sorrow about, it makes you even look, you are not as beautiful as you ought to be. You feel wretched. You feel gloomy. You feel terrible. And people looking at you, they would not like to stay with you. But when you are happy, when you are joyful, when you are excited, and the happiness and the joy puts a smile on your face. Everybody likes to stay with you, likes to be with you. How can you have that kind of happiness? Morning, afternoon, evening, you're happy. Whatever is happening, you know that you are related to God, you are happy. It's the kind of happiness that comes with salvation. When you are born again, you are a child of God. You know that heaven is caring for you. And you know that you are on the Lord's side, the Lord is on your side. Happy, joyful, excited. Actually, the Bible says that when you belong to God, happiness comes to your life. When you get salvation, happiness comes to your life. I was looking at Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33, I'm reading from verse 29. Deuteronomy chapter 33. I was looking at verse 29. It says, Happy art thou, O Israel, and who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord. Happy art thou because you are saved by the Lord. Saved of the Lord. He took them out of the captivity of Egypt. And he has taken you out of the captivity of sin. He picked you up from the dungeon. And he says, I forgive you. I cleanse you. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And now the blood of Jesus Christ covers you. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you. The blood of Jesus Christ has converted you. You are now a new creature in Christ. What joy you have. What happiness you have. Actually, that's why David prayed the prayer for salvation. Look at Psalm 51. In Psalm 51, he began to pray. He wanted that salvation once again. That joy once again. That happiness once again. Show me a backslider. I show you a miserable man. A miserable woman. Show me somebody who was saved before and then went back to sin and now Satan has grabbed him and is rubbing his nose in the mud. I show you a sorrowful man, a sorrowful woman. That's what happened to David. But now when he came, he began to pray. I want happiness back. I want joy back. The joy to know that I belong to the Lord. And the joy to know that if I die, I am going to heaven. You know, David was still on the throne. He still had privilege of ruling. He was still an exalted man, a privileged man. He still had all the things of this world. He still had a beautiful, a good house. He still had an army he was controlling. But salvation was gone. Because of that, there was sorrow. He said, the bones you are broken, I want to rejoice once again. That's why, if you are not going to have just a temporary joy, I got healed, my blind eyes are open, you must go forward and get saved and have salvation. It says in Psalm 51 verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. 
Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part and in the hidden part. Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me, purge me, purge me with his soap, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy. Make me hear joy. He said, I'm sad right now. I feel miserable right now. I'm sorrowful right now. Because there is a wall of partition between me and my heavenly father. My sin have cut me away from the Lord. I'm miserable and sorrowful. But make me hear joy and gladness. That the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. He said, because of my backsliding. Because of my sin. It's like the bones in my body, they are all broken. I don't have the excitement or the strength to even rise up and say, I'm going to the battlefield. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. My bones are broken. I'm a broken hearted man. Hide thy face from my sins. Blot out all mine iniquities. He was praying for salvation, you know. He was praying for restoration. He said, my sins, they weigh down on me. My iniquity is too much for me. The burden of guilt and condemnation is too much for me to bear. He says, forgive me, Lord. Blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. That's the prayer you pray. As you want to experience the joy, the happiness in salvation. You don't want to be like an hypocrite. That is smiling broad externally, but internally you know you are miserable. That's it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But it's all shallow and empty. Because you know you have sinned and you have not repented. It says, I need a change. I need a conversion. I need the salvation of the Lord. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. He knew that religion cannot do that. He knew that tradition cannot do that. He knew that your position as a king in society cannot do that. He knew that money cannot provide that. He knew that anything you have on earth cannot give you a clean heart. God has to do it himself. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. We said the greatest sin you can have. Holy Spirit is greater than money. Holy Spirit is greater than political position. The Holy Spirit is greater than position in society. The Holy Spirit, the third personality of the Trinity, coming unto you, living with you, abiding with you, fellowship and helping you every step of the way. He said, it's the greatest thing you can ever have. Look at verse 12 now. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Not human salvation, heavenly salvation. Divine salvation. The salvation that comes from the hand of God alone. The one that Jesus purchased for you on the cross of Calvary. There are some people that will deceive you. And then they say, I am Mr. So-and-so, Prophet so-and-so, Priest so-and-so. They say, I give you salvation. That's a lie. David said, there's no salvation that will satisfy your soul except the one that comes from heaven. Give me the joy of thy salvation. 
I just want to ask in the Lord today. You want to be sure beyond any shadow of doubt that you are saved. And when you are saved, that joy will come. The joy of salvation. The assurance you have from the Lord himself. That your sins are forgiven. That you don't have any guilt or condemnation before the Lord. That you have turned away from sin. And the Lord has accepted you. Now you are the accepted one in the beloved. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. I pray the Lord will do it. Are you there? I said I pray the Lord will do it. If he has done it already, you will keep that salvation in Jesus name. The happiness that comes through salvation. Number two now. The healing of the sick. Healing of every sickness. Your time has come. I'm talking to somebody there. Your time has come. I said I'm talking to somebody there. Your time has come. Healing for every sickness. You know, the Lord is not a partial God. He doesn't heal one and leave another. He doesn't deliver one and leave the other one. Everyone here. Everyone here. Are you there? Or are you there? I said, are you there? Or are you there? He will heal your body. He will heal your body. If you are sure and you know he has blessed you and nobody can reverse it, you'll give me a good, good amen. <laughs> Healing for every sickness. Look at Luke chapter 4. In Luke chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 40. Luke chapter 4, we're looking at verse 40. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick, you see that, any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him. And he laid his hands on everyone, everyone, every one of them, and he healed them. It's right there by your side. You've gone up and down and they say, we cannot help you. It appears they say, go home and do your best and get ready to die. You will not die, you will live. I said you will not die, you will live. Because Jesus is your healer, you will not die. Because Jesus is your deliverer, you will not die. Because of the mighty power of Jesus that can never change, you will not die. Because he laid the signs on everyone and every one of them got healed. Jesus the same yesterday, today and forever. And that manifestation of power is still here today. And every tormenting spirit in your life is coming out right now. You are free. Because if the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I am free. I am free. Free indeed. That means you are free 100%. Free completely without any part of you remaining in bondage. Because of Jesus. Because he cannot fail. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 16. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem. 
and they brought sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed how many everyone and they were healed everyone you came for your healing and you'll be healed everyone those are far away there. You are hearing my voice. The Lord is talking to you through me. You will be healed, everyone, in Jesus' name. Yes. And those who have been suffering for a long time, the Lord says, your time of release or your time of healing has now arrived. He will do it for you. I said he will do it for you. I have received a commandment to bless and nobody can reverse it. The blessing of the Lord cannot be reversed, will not be reversed in your life in Jesus' name. In James chapter 5. James chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 15 here. James chapter 5 verse 15. It says, and the prayer of faith shall save, shall heal, shall deliver the sick. The prayer of faith shall heal, shall save, shall deliver the sick. That's the only kind of prayer we pray. It's the prayer of faith that depends and trusts in the faithfulness of God. And because God is faithful and he cannot fail. He is faithful and he cannot lie. That's why we come to God and he has told us that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. All the oppression in your life will bow at the mention of the name of Jesus. All the sicknesses will vanish away at the mention of the name of Jesus. Because the prayer of faith shall save the sick. In the latter part of verse 16, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It's getting to you now. I said it's getting to you now. And when we begin to pray, and you hear that final amen. Amen, amen means so let it be so and so it is. As you check up yourself like this, all sicknesses are gone. All infirmities are gone. They say, praise the Lord, he has made me whole. Number one, happiness through salvation. Number two, healing for every sickness. Number three now. You know, already, let me read it to you. First Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 19. First Corinthians 15 verse 19. This is what it says in the Bible. If in this life only we have Hope in Christ were of all men the most miserable. If all we have is healing, if all we have is bread and butter, if all we have is a car, if all we have is a house, if all we have is landed property, if all we have is, I won that case, I got that land. If that's all you have. If all we have is political position. I claim the each have got it. If all we have is certificate. I prayed and fasted and I got my certificate. If all we have is job. I told the man of God, pray for me. He prayed for me. I got my job. If you have that and you still have salvation, wonderful. If you have all that and you have sanctification, wonderful. 
But if that is all you have, and there's no salvation, there's no holiness, there's no sanctification, you'll be of all men the most miserable in eternity. That's why the Lord is talking to us about heaven for the sanctified. Sanctification is not just a doctrine, it's an experience. Sanctification is not just something we say in church, it is something we demonstrate at home. Sanctification is not, I am a member of deeper life, and they will ask me question, when were you saved, when were you sanctified, and I put a date down. Sanctification is not for a date, it is for a qualification to get you to heaven. There are things reserved for you in heaven. If you don't get to heaven, are you going to have those things that are reserved for you in heaven? In 1 Peter chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 3. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again, born again, it unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Look at verse 4 now. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fades not away, reserved in heaven for you. An inheritance reserved in heaven for you. It's not talking about healing. There's no sickness in heaven. There's no healing there. It's not talking about a motor car, an inheritance of a car. They don't use cars in heaven. It's not talking about inheritance of land, inheritance of house. All that is not in heaven. An inheritance of a reward reserved for you in heaven. But if you are not saved, you will not get there. If you are not holy and pure, you will not get there. All you will say is that I got healed, my blind eyes got open, and then you go back to tradition, you go back to idol worship, and then you go to hell. Look at verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Now verse 14, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former laws in your ignorance. But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Now when he says, be ye holy in all manner of conversation and conduct and character. You are outwardly, externally holy when you are saved. But that's not in all manner of conduct and character and creature. But you go back to God. There is something still inside he needs to take away. Iniquity and sin inside he needs to take away. The defilement that is covered up inside, he needs to take away. He needs to give you an inner cleansing, inward cleansing, so that you are holy in all manner of conversation and conduct and character. You are a totally new creature within and without. You understand what Jesus said about love, for example. And you will say, I love everybody. I love my neighbor. Wonderful. 
you are saved. Because you are saved, you love normally. And you love everybody. You smile, you shake hands, and wonderful. How are you, my brother? How are you, my sister? And they can see that you love them. You are saved. That's another kind of love. That you love one another as I have loved you. That one takes sanctification. The love of Jesus is not just smiling and shaking hands. And then internally, he has something against you. And he says, well, the day is coming. God will catch him. That deeper love, that you love one another as Christ has loved you. That's what we're talking about. That's sanctification. And for us to get to heaven, we need to be saved, number one. We need to be sanctified, number two. Heaven for the sanctified. I pray you'll get to heaven. I said, I pray you'll get to heaven. Look at verse 16. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And that's what gets us to heaven. You need sanctification to get to heaven. You need something. It's not only for your body, for your soul, for your spirit. Thank God you're having it today. I say thank God you're having it today. Healing is wonderful for the body. Salvation is great for the soul. Sanctification is necessary for your spirit so you can get to heaven. And Christ has come to provide everything for us. Christ has come to give us everything we need so we can get to heaven. You have a good life here on earth. He heals your body. He provides for you. And then you have the possibility of getting to heaven and living with God in heaven forever. Happiness through salvation. It's available now. Healing of every sickness. It's available now. And sanctification of your spirit, of your heart, of your mind, of your life is available now. The Lord will do it. Are you there? I said the Lord will do it. Are you there? I said the Lord will do it. Are you ready to pray? I said, are you ready to receive? Are you ready to have? Why don't you rise up? And then you will tell the Lord, if you have not been saved, if you have not been born again, the opportunity is there right now. He wants to save you. He wants to take the guilt of sin away. The burden of sin away. He wants to cleanse your heart. And you're saying, Lord, forgive me. Open your mouth and pray. You tell the Lord. Salvation is not something somebody else will tell you. You are saved. You will know you have repented. You know you have turned away from sin. You know you have said bye-bye to occultism. Bye-bye to the power of darkness. Bye-bye to the conflict in society. Bye-bye to tradition. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. And if you are saved, if you are saved, just say, praise the Lord, I am saved. Thank you, Jesus, I am saved. Thank you, Jesus, I'm born again. Thank you, Jesus, my sins are forgiven. Thank you, Jesus, I have grace. Grace to live a victorious life. Salvation. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Tell the Lord. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
Salvation is available. You don't need to die in sin. You don't need to go to hell. Salvation is here. It's just the moment you call on the name of the Lord in sincerity. He saves you. He saves you. He saves you. Praise the Lord. I am saved. In Jesus' name we pray. You know he can sanctify you too. I said, do you know he can sanctify you too? I said, do you know he can sanctify you too? When will he do it? When will you tell him to do it? And why don't you tell him then? And say, Lord, I need holiness. I need holiness. Holiness without hypocrisy. Holiness without covering up. Holiness that doesn't have any fraud. Holiness that doesn't steal church money. Holiness that does not steal family money. Holiness that does not steal money from the government. And holiness from within. Holiness in your heart. Holiness in your spirit. Holiness that makes you transparent. That's what Jesus will do. Tell him. Tell him. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. If you die, you want to go to heaven, you need holiness. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see the Lord. Lord, who shall ascend to your holy hill? Who will dwell on the hill of the Lord, the house of the Lord forever? They that have clean hands and a pure heart. Clean hands and a pure heart. Clean hands and a pure heart. Transparently, you are not covering up any evil. Your heart is clean, your heart is pure, your heart is holy. You're serving the Lord with sincerity. When you are at home, you still stand by the word of God. In the office, you are standing by the word of God. You are not bending the word of God to compromise. Tell the Lord, I need to be sanctified. I need to be made holy. I need to be made pure. Purify me, Lord. Sanctify me, Lord. Make me holy, Lord. In my heart, in my spirit, in my inner man, in my thoughts, in my mind, within me, where people cannot even see and they cannot tell, but you can see and you can tell. Sanctify me. He will do it. He will do it. He heals, he saves, he sanctifies. In Jesus' name we pray. And of course you know he can heal your body. Yes or no? He can break every yoke in your life. Yes or no? He can stop all the activity of Satan in your, fo in your family, in your home. Yes or no? He can put a testimony in your mouth. It can give you a miracle. It can set you completely free. Yes or no? Uh, if you know it is yes, tell the Lord. I will not carry sickness out of this place. I have my miracle. I have my deliverance. It will set me free. No sickness will tie me down. I am free. I am free. I am well. He will make me whole. My body will receive a supernatural touch of the Lord. He heals. He delivers. He breaks every yoke and removes every oppression. He will do it right now. He will do it right now. Miracle. Healing. Deliverance. 
and he will set you free. His name is Jesus, he'll set you free. His name is Jesus, he'll set you free. He has decided and promised to heal you today, and nobody can reverse that. Miracle time has come. Healing time has come. Deliverance time has come. In Jesus' name we pray. Who is going to get a miracle? I said who is going to get the healing. I said who is going to get the blessing of the Lord. Who is going to have a testimony? Where is he? Where is she there? I said who is going to have a testimony? Where are you there? It's coming your way. I said it's coming your way. Are you ready? Keep that hand up. Your healing has come. Your miracle has come. Your deliverance has come. You will not wait for other people after the final amen. You'll check up yourself. Praise the Lord. Look at it. It's here already. Keep up that hand. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the provision you have made for everyone. Thank you for the deliverance of every captive. Thank you for the healing of every sick one. Thank you for the release you give to those who are held down. Thank you because no sickness can remain even at this time. We come before you. You have pronounced a blessing. Nobody can reverse it in Jesus' name. Satan has fallen. Satan has failed. He will not continue to oppress you. The Lord defeated him and knocked him down on the cross of Calvary. And therefore I command Satan, remove your hand from them in Jesus' name. All that spirit of insanity, you cannot stay there again. Epilepsy, you cannot stay there again. Madness, you cannot stay there again. I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Cancer, you have to go. You don't have any place, any position, any right in the midst of the people of God. Their bodies are not the temple of the Holy Ghost. Cancer has no accommodation in your body. I command you, cancer, come out in Jesus' name. Also, we don't give you any chance there. You cannot remain in that temple of God. Also, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. All that swelling in the body, all that pain in the body, you have no right to be there. And therefore, right now, I command you, pack your load and go in Jesus' name. All that bleeding, constant bleeding, it's coming to an end right now. The hand of Jesus touch you. The virtue of Jesus pass through your body. That blood come to an end right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those people that their eyes are still blind. Blindness is not from Jesus. He is the light of the world. And I pray that the light of his power will shine into your blind eyes right now. Blindness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, open all those blind eyes. Those dim eyes. Open them in Jesus' name. That deafness in your ear. The end has come to that. I command that deafness come out in Jesus' name. That dumbness, I command you right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Those who are lame, those who are paralyzed, 
those who are broken bones. Power has come. Power has come. Power has come. Broken bones anywhere in the body. Joy together right now in Jesus' name. Short leg. I command that short leg. Grow out right now. Short leg. Grow out in Jesus' name. I command those who have stroke. That stroke in your body, I knock it out. Stand up and walk. Stretch that hand and behold. You are healed in Jesus' name. Those who are on crutches. Or lying on the mat. Or staying in the wheelchair. I send for the power of healing in your body right now. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Rise and walk in Jesus' name. Lord, every curse I break. Every yoke I break. The anointing that breaks the yoke, take every yoke out of your life in Jesus' name. I pray now, Lord, miracle everywhere. Healing everywhere. Deliverance everywhere. Set your people free. Everyone free. Everybody free. Boys and girls free. Old people free. The freedom come to you right now. Receive your miracle. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. It is confirmed. Nobody can reverse it. In Jesus' name we pray.